Brothers and sisters, God's abundant blessings to all of you joining us today for this Jesus 2020 conference. I'm Peter Smith, the Auxiliary Bishop for the Archdiocese of Portland. I got involved in the Catholic Charismatic Renewal back in South Africa where I was born and raised. And I encountered the renewal as a university student. After completion of my studies, I came to the United States and joined a charismatic community in uh, 2001. I was ordained a priest in the Archdiocese of Portland in 2014, ordained auxiliary bishop for the Archdiocese. And several years ago, I was appointed to the International Service of Communion of Caris to help begin the establishment of Caris. And brothers and sisters, that's what we're going to talk about today. So before I get into Caris, just a few things about the background of the renewal and this wonderful blessing God has given to us. It's now 53 plus years since the Catholic Charismatic first came into the open in 1967. Currently, the Vatican estimates that there are between 110 and 120 million Catholics active in the renewal at this time. And in addition to that, there are scores of other Catholics, scores of millions of other Catholics, who have been through the renewal and gone on to other ministries and service within the church. So as you can see, the, the blessing of the baptism and the Holy Spirit has had a terrific impact on the life of the church. The Catholic Charismatic Renewal has now been described as a current of grace. This term that was popularized by our current Holy Father, Pope Francis, began with uh, Pope St. Paul VI. And they use that term because the Catholic Charismatic Renewal is not a movement in the strict sense. Why is that? When we think about movements in the strict sense, they tend to be very specific, very organized, very defined, and they are led in a particular way. In contrast, the renewal doesn't have any founder or founders. It has no particular way of life or particular service that it embraces. It is much broader than this. And that is why the Holy Father reminds us that we are part of a current of grace. So let's take a few moments now and look at some key elements of the Catholic charismatic renewal and what God is doing in our lives as a people and as a church and in the world. What is the heart of the Catholic charismatic renewal? There are some fundamental things that are key in our experience of the Catholic charismatic renewal. And they are like ripples going out in a circle on a pond. If you take a pebble and drop it in the pond, you see the ripples going out. And these different elements are like those ripples going out in the pond. So what is the first ripple? A life transforming and ongoing experience of God through surrendering to Christ and being baptized in the Holy Spirit, however that comes about. That is the fundamental basis of what begins this new life in the Spirit in us. Secondly, a greater desire for participation in the life of the people of God, the faith community, and a desire for deeper connection and belonging. Those of us who have been baptized in the Spirit understand this instinctively. We have this desire and it's fueled in us by what the Lord and the Holy Spirit are doing. Thirdly, a greater desire to share the gospel, the good news, to evangelize and to bring the good news to other people. How many of us were very quiet about our faith? And then when we were baptized in the Spirit, we went out and began sharing with others with the wonderful things God has done for us. The fourth thing I would add to this is a greater desire for unity and reconciliation with other Christians and people of faith. No longer we do, do we just see ourselves in categories, Catholics, Protestants, or whatever. We now begin to see ourselves as brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. Even if we perhaps worship, believe, and practice a little differently, but we recognize what Christ is doing in one another as brothers and sisters. And somehow, that kinship relationship is there. And finally, a greater desire to serve in many and various ways, especially for those in need. And this is where we see many of the ministries that come out of the renewal. So the next thing to look at is what Karis talks about and the church talks about as expressions of the renewal. We don't use that language quite that way here in the, in the United States, but that would be something like different manifestations of the charismatic renewal in the church. And the Holy Spirit gives rise to a great variety of expressions with much diversity in each one of them. So what are those? If you look at the Catholic charismatic renewal, we have three 
broad streams that come out of the, the renewal and the baptism in the Spirit. And the first one are prayer groups and the diocesan renewal. In other words, prayer meetings, prayer groups, days of renewal, retreats, life in the Spirit, seminars, uh, publications, conferences, and so on. This is the basic foundation of the renewal for the majority of Catholics who are involved in the renewal. The other two, two streams that come out of the renewal are this, ministries of all kinds. And we've seen a multiplicity of this worldwide, particularly evangelistic ministries, educational ministries, ministries of healing and reconciliation, serving the poor, doing works of mercy and the like. And these are all coming out of the faith of people that have come alive through being in the renewal. And finally, the third stream that we see coming out of the renewal is that of communities and fellowships and associations. And again, these are broad and diverse. We have both lay communities and religious communities. There are new religious communities coming out, coming into being through this. And we have communities that are highly organized to those who are, are very loosely structured, but people drawn together by this impulse to share life in Christ and to go forth and to serve as Jesus calls us to serve. So with that as the background, that's what we are or where we are in the renewal today. So what is Charis, this new thing that has come about? Catholic Charismatic International Service, or Charis, is a new initiative by Pope Francis to support and encourage the work of the renewal worldwide. Our Holy Father sought a single service to benefit all the different expressions of the renewal. And so Charis was established by the Holy See through the Dicastery, that means a Vatican congregation, through the Dicastery for Laity, Marriage and Life. So this action brings the worldwide renewal into the heart of the Church. And as such now, Charis acts in the name of the Church in serving all the different expressions of the renewal. Previously, expressions of the renewal came to the church seeking recognition. Now the church has established charis for the renewal and it is at the heart of the church. It is no longer the case that some in authority can ignore the root renewal as just one particular movement or spirituality that they don't care for. And it is also important to note that in bringing about charis, charis is not a governance body, but its focus is service, unity, and communion. So what about other entities recognized by the Church? The establishment of Charis does not affect the recognition of these other entities in the renewal. ICRIS, International Catholic Charismatic Renewal Services, and the Catholic Fraternity of, of Communities concluded their missions when Charis came into being. Individual ministries, communities, and expressions of the renewal, however, which have formal recognition by the church in various ways are not affected by this. They retain that recognition in the places that they received it. So what is the focus of Charis? Charis has three main elements in its mandate. One, to promote, support, and spread the baptism in the spirit in the church and throughout the world. Two, to foster unity and communion in the renewal worldwide and with other Christians as this is an ecumenical grace, as our Holy Father has reminded us. And thirdly, to go out to the peripheries, to the poor and the marginalized who have not heard the gospel and the new life and the Holy Spirit. If these principles sound familiar, they should. These and the mission of Charis are reflected in the new Pentecost Today USA ministry, and these three key elements are neatly summarized in the three words used to describe what Pentecost Today USA is doing. That is, to bring, to build, and to serve. To bring, to bring the baptism in the Holy Spirit to the whole church, to build, to build unity in the body of Christ, and to serve, to serve the physically and spiritually poor. And you will hear much more about this through the rest of this conference. So what about prayer groups, communities, and ministries? Continue your life, continue your works, continue your ministries. Continue the particular mission and apostolate God has brought you into. In doing so, 
Also take into account the key elements of the CARES mission in your own missions, ministries, and outreaches. A strong renewal comes from strong prayer groups and a strong diocesan renewal. These are the foundations of the Catholic charismatic renewal. Strong ministries and strong communities come out of this foundation. Continue responding to God's invitation and in serving without expectation of reward for ourselves. Now, a quick comment about how Charis is organized. So there are three levels of organization in Charis. So we'll start at the, the lowest level, which is the Charis National Service of Communion. So these are to be formed in each nation and to, respect all, and to reflect as best they can all the elements of the Catholic charismatic renewal in the, those nations. Here in the United States, we've already formed our CNSC, CARES National Service of Communion. And it combines all the different NSCs, the ethnic and language groups, communities, ministries, clergy, religious, youth, and ecumenical representatives. It is in place, and Monsignor Joseph Malagreca has been elected chair of this group. The next level up is the Caris Continental Service of Communion. And there are six of these, and we are part of the Americas. That's right, folks. They put all the Americas into one group. So we are the Americas North, Central, and South America. And we have seven representatives in total so far. Uh, three are from North America. Uh, Andres Aranjo represents the Spanish-speaking renewal in the United States and Canada. Myself, uh, I represent the English-speaking renewal in the United States and Canada. And Diane Bergeron represents the French-speaking renewal in North America and in South America. And there are additional delegates for uh, Central America and South America. And the, 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 the highest level is Caris International Service of Communion. So this is the overall body for the renewal worldwide. So there are 12 members representing the different regions of the world, and there are six other members representing communities, associations, ministries, and youth. And in addition, there is a moderator, Jean-Luc Mertz from Belgium, and an ecclesial assistant, Cardinal Raniero Cantalamessa, who is preacher to the papal household and well known to all of us in the renewal worldwide. And at this point, I'll add something to my prepared notes and say, it is we have great gratitude to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for recognizing the service of Father Raniero Cantalamessa and elevating him to the dignity of a cardinal. And yet, even so, we see our beloved Raniero Cantalamessa continuing his life of simplicity and faithfulness to the gospel and the simple life of faith as a Franciscan. In terms of office on the the uh, Caris International Service Communion are three years and delegates are chosen by election. The lower bodies re electing representatives to the higher body bodies. Initially, in order to start the establishment of Caris, those delegates had to be appointed to begin the process and begin moving things forward. Once things are in place, we will move towards electing all representatives for all different bodies. Challenges and opportunities. Yes, folks, there have been plenty of these. Starting Karis has been challenging, but all challenges also can be opportunities. Working out some of the practical details has taken much work and discussion. Just talk to all the folks who participated in putting together our Karis National Service Community of Communion here in the United States. We are making progress, but we still have more work ahead. Like computer operating systems, no matter how much we think we have all the angles covered, ongoing use means new glitches and gaps become clear and we have to deal with them. Another challenge, and perhaps a, a more important challenge, is that sometimes we have taken hold of the gift God has given us and made them our own in some ways. In doing so, we limit the freedom of God to lead and direct us in new ways and to expand the gift that God has given us. Brothers and sisters, freely we have received and freely we are invited to give, but it is God's gift and we must always recognize this and allow God to do with his gift what he wills. 
to live is to change, and the renewal has grown, developed, and changed in many ways from its humble beginnings. Now, as human beings, we like change, but almost always for other people, not so much for ourselves. For ourselves, it can be more challenging, particularly when we have become comfortable where we are. We can never allow ourselves to become too comfortable where we are, because then we may not be as willing or as open to follow the Lord in new ways and new directions. And we may limit what the Holy Spirit wants to invite us to and to serve the Lord in different ways. As I come to the conclusion of this, this brief talk, just some practical information. Where do you find more information about Karis? Well, you can go to the Karis website uh, on the web, and the address is www.charis.international. And if you want to know more information about Karis and how it's set up, go and click on the About Us and the resource pages. Allow me to conclude with some encouragement and support from the leadership that the church has given us in Karis. Cardinal Cantalamesa reminded us at the launch of Karis in Rome in 2019, and some of us were there for that wonderful event. He stated, the Father wants to glorify the Son, Jesus Christ, on the earth in a new way, through a new intervention. The Holy Spirit is appointed to carry out this glorification because it is written, He will glorify me and take that which is mine. A Christian life entirely consecrated to God, without a founder, without a rule, and without new congregations. The founder, Jesus. The rule, the gospel interpreted by the Holy Spirit. The congregation, the church. Do not worry about tomorrow. Do not try to make something that will remain do not try to set in motion recognized organizations that can be perpetuated by successes. Jesus is a founder who never dies, so there's no need for successes. We must always let him do new things, even tomorrow. The Holy Spirit will remain in the church, even tomorrow. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, encouraged us at the same event. With hearts as one, turn to the Father and testifying to unity and diversity, the diversity of charisms that the Spirit has raised up in these last 52 years. Enlarge your, the site of your tent, we read in the prophecy of Isaiah, so that all can dwell there as members of one family, a family where there is only one God and Father, one Lord Jesus Christ, and one Spirit of life, a family in which no one member is more important than another, neither in virtue of age, intelligence, or ability, for all are beloved children of the same Father. In this regard, St. Paul's example of the body and its members speaks eloquently to us all. Each member of the body needs all the others, all together. As I conclude, brothers and sisters, let us pray that we may be more and more open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit who makes Christ alive in us and who gives us the gifts we need to love, to serve, and to grow in fraternity and communion with one another. Amen.